welcome to the awesome ocean life beaded animal pal tutorial by the Wacomico County Libraries. My name is Miss Vicky and I'm here to show you uh, step by step how to do all, uh, all three of the animals in the awesome ocean life beaded animal pal bag. Um, if you got a bag from your take and make you should have one that looks a little bit like this. There will be paper instructions included so you can follow along with that as well. Each kit should have a variety of uh, different colored beads uh, a length of cord, which you can cut to whichever length you need, and there should be two keychain attachments, little keychain metal, here we are, in there as well. Um, when I start, we'll zoom in so you'll be able to see a little better. Um, so if you need one, uh, we are not letting at this point you choose which kit you get. Um, it's going to be whatever we have. You'll get one of the three. There's Ocean Life, Wriggling Reptiles, and Marvelous Mammals. Uh, on YouTube, our channel will also have those uh, videos up as well. So if you got one of the other two, you can go ahead and find a different video. Um, I'm going to include a timestamp on the video description down below uh, that's going to show you uh, where to find each individual animal. So if you pick a certain one, you can just skip right to the tutorial. You don't have to watch the entire thing to find one animal. Um, so the ones that are included in the kit for awesome ocean life is an octopus. It's Ollie the octopus. It's got eight legs. We'll have the shark, and he's going to even have little fins. And those are a little tricky, so make sure you watch the video. It's good. Shark, and then we'll also have Shell the sea turtle. And while I do these kit, these uh, beaded animal buddies, I'm going to also be talking about some fun facts that I found about the various animals because it's not as super exciting to watch me just spring beads for half an hour. So we'll go over some information so you might even learn something today, whether you like it or not. So let's get started. Let's start on our last animal, Shell the Sea Turtle. This is going to be a relatively small one. He's not going to take too long. He's pretty good for a beginner um, or as a trial or test project to see if you like to do it. Pretty straightforward. As always, I don't think I have enough cord on this one, but I will use this because one thing you need to do when you are making these animals is to make sure you have a, a good stable tension point for your animal. And what I like to do is take a little extra cord. You can use yarn, a shoestring, anything you have laying around. You don't need much. Um, what I'm doing, because I'm working on a table, is I'm going to hang, um, tape it to the top of my table with some pretty good tape. You can use scotch tape. Don't use the clear tape because that doesn't hold very well. Um, masking tape, packing tape, something like that. And you want to tape it to the table. And I'm going to tape it up here so you can see as I work. Hopefully that's going to be let's make that loop a little shorter. So what I'm doing is I'm making a loop eventually. Uh, and one, it's the very end of the spool that I had. So it's a little bit more curly. It wants to curl up on me. All right, so all you need is a small loop so you can put your ring on there. Now, if you got the Awesome Ocean Life Kit, you are in the correct video. Um, if you skip to this spot and this is the first time you see it, I'm going to go through it again. If you skipped forward to this timestamp, your bag should have a variety of colors uh, in our Ocean Life theme. Uh, and it also should come with an adequate length of cordage for you to use. I'm using a different one this time because this is for this kit and not for me. Um, and then inside this kit, you should also have two of these little key rings like that. If you ever find when you're looking for your kit and you realize you don't have a piece of the equipment that we are supposed to be including, feel free to give us a call um, and we'll figure out a way to get it for you so you can make that kit. If you decide you want to make more animals after this one and uh, you want to find more, because Pinterest has no end of animals <laughs> to do with these things. And because you search for it once, it keeps telling you, are you sure you want to try this one? All right. So we have that on our hook. 
What this does is this will keep it nice and sturdy so you can um, pull it snug, which you'll need to do. And actually, I need to retape this because fooling around with it like that made it so it wasn't as sticky anymore. So let's try that again, shall we? Where's my tape? There it is. Pull off a fresh piece of tape. Yeah, apparently when you pull it off and put it back on a couple times, it's like, ah, no, I don't want to stick anymore. So let's get that up here. You stay down here. Tape that to the table. Hopefully, nice and sturdy. All right, let's go. So we're gonna make our little turtle and we're gonna start off by cutting off and on the instructions, it'll say that we need, where's my turtle go? Where'd my turtle go? Here he is, shell the turtle. He requires, and I'm gonna try to get up here so you can see it on the video. Shell the turtle's right here. He requires two yards. And you should have the instructions anyway in the kit, so you should be able to read along with me with two yards of cord and 78 beads. Um, you don't have to do the same colors I do. Um, I like to play around with patterns and I like to play with colors, but you'll have a variety of colors to choose from. You can make them as wacky looking or as realistic looking as you like. So first, let's do the cord. I'm going to use some extra cord that I got from the store. I believe these are from Walmart, and you know what? I like pink. It's maybe not the most aquatic-themed color, but uh, you know, we'll go with it. Um, there we go. Out. So I have a yardstick here, and uh, it's super handy. If all you have is a ruler at home, which is far more likely than having a yardstick floating around, um, you can use the yard, the ruler, but just make sure you multiply the yards by three. So instead of two yards, you'll be doing six feet. So all I'm going to do is pull one to the end. And of course, this camera lens isn't getting that far, but we have one length. And then I'm just going to grab this end here and pull it across again and have two length. So and most of these program projects, they actually on the um, instructions tell you to put a little more uh, yardage than you actually need. But that's good, so rather, it's better to have more than you need than not enough, because nothing's worse than getting the very end of your animal and running out of cordage. So, what we're going to do to start is pull your two ends together, so they're, you know, about the same. They don't have to be super, super close, but they can be, just make them in, in the general vicinity of close. Pull it to the other end, so you have essentially a loop. What we're going to do is we're going to put that loop through here, through the uh, hook, or the, uh, the keychain. And then just, I like to put both fingers in, put them like this, then grab the extra cord. Try not to pull on either end and um, hold it stationary so that you're not gonna get the ends out of whack too much. Because if you pull them out of, if they're not even enough, and they don't have to be, like I said, they don't have to be super straight. See, I pulled mine a little bit and I have one that's about an inch and a half shorter, but that's not that big a deal. Um, you just don't want it to be drastically shorter on one side because then you're going to run out of space and run out of cord. Okay, so let's uh, get some quick little PSAs here. Um, if you want to avoid uh, a mess and uh, a lot of heartache, I would say get yourself a small bowl. It can be just a plastic mixing or plastic, you know, bowl from the kitchen. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just something to hold your bees and, and keep them where they need to be. Um, I'm just going to dump all of them out so that I can see what I got. They're so pretty. I love this color scheme. So we're gonna start with our shell the turtle. And it says to start, your first row will have two beads. I think I'm gonna go with green and then maybe some pearlescent white and blue later on. We'll figure it out. Like I said, it can be as wacky or as true to life as you like. And each kit we include may or may not have the same distribution of colors. So you may have more green in yours. You may have more blue in yours. Um, it just depends on what we had and what we put in that kit that day. So, to do a simple pass on these kits, and this is a very standard, like what you're going to do on most your normal rows, you put it on one side, just like that. You want to put it close to the knot, close to the top as possible because that's how you get it nice and snug. If you get too loose, they get too floppy and they lose their shape and that's no bueno. So then, what you do is you take the other cord that doesn't have any beads on it just yet, and you want to run it through the opposite direction of the way the string took the other one. What this does is it essentially traps these beads in a loop. And we gotta straighten it out a little bit. There we go. You're gonna trap it in a little bit of a loop. 
I'm not sure if you can see really well from here. So now those bees are going nowhere. Now the first couple rows you may notice that they're going to keep trying to escape and that's just simply because there's not enough tension uh, built up. And that happens as you move on to the animal and you will see. So the next row is three. So it's, a, like I said, very simple, easy pass through. There's only one little spot on here when you do his arms and his legs that gets a little bit complicated. And even that isn't so bad once you figure it out. Um, it's really hard to mess up. I say that, of course. I'm sure I'll find a way. Um, so what you do is you run it through. It doesn't matter which side you start on, really. I haven't found that it makes it a huge difference. Um, and then so you take your three beads that you run in. It looks a little funny right now. But if you do the same thing, you take the other cord and you run it through the opposite direction. It will line up quite nicely just underneath the two. So what we're doing is we're building its head. Just like in the our demonstration animal, we have a little pointy head. So there's three. And for the next few rows, it's just gonna be same, you know, second verse, same as the first type deal, where we're just gonna keep going with the same general uh, pattern. And until I get to the arms, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. So while we're working on the same thing over and over again, I'm going to talk about some fun facts about the sea turtle that I found. So, sea turtles are some of the oldest animals on the planet. Along with the sharks and the jellyfish, or um, octopus, that I'm doing the rest of the kit, they are some of the oldest animals on the planet. The oldest sea turtle fossil that is found is 120 million years old. And that uh, means they swam at the same time as sharks and octopus and dinosaurs. Did you know there's a World Sea Turtle Day? The World Sea Turtle Day is June 16th, so just at the beginning of our summer reading program this year, which is kind of cool. Leatherback turtles, which is a type of sea turtle, can travel more than 16,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles to dine on their favorite jellyfish because jellyfish are some of sea turtles' favorite foods. And part of the reason why they tell you not to release balloons or leave plastic trash bags everywhere is that if they get into the ocean, the sea turtles, when they see a balloon or a plastic bag floating around in the ocean, they tend to think it's a sea turtle and they will try to eat it. But uh, turtles' digestive systems are not designed to handle plastic bags. So it's really bad for them. That's why it's really careful to pick up your trash. Leatherbacks are also one of the largest species of sea turtle. And they can uh, grow as large as 900 kilograms or almost 2,000 pounds, which is insane. They're huge. Going back to four. Female turtles, sea turtles, um, always return to the same place where they were hatched to lay their eggs. Green sea turtles can hold their breath underwater for as long as five hours. They do this by slowing down their heart rate to very, very slow, which minimizes the amount of their oxygen their body needs, which makes it them be able to hold their breath longer. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. I always count my bead numbers every single time because I want to make sure I get it right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the last row we're going to do before we do the arms. And that's where I'll show you how to do them. They're actually kind of fun. If you're following along the pattern, the pattern is actually really good about showing you how the cord goes. Um, a lot of these animals I haven't done in years, um, if at all, and uh, I was able to figure it out fairly easily. 
and for someone who hasn't done these things in a decade or so, uh, <laughs> it was actually fairly impressive. Because the chords will show you, if you follow the chords up to the top, you can tell the direction they're supposed to go. If you have any questions, uh, if you have any adults available to help you with this one, if they're between the ages of, I don't know, 30 and 40, they may very well remember these little beaded animal crafts because they were uh, something that kept us entertained on bus ride before the time of cell phones. All right, let's start on his feet. And I'm gonna make his feet a different color just because I can. I'll make his feet blue. That's not the right blue. And some of the kits have different types of blue, so, you know. All right, so to make the feet, the pattern says you need four beads for his feet. This is gonna be his arm, and these will be his three toes or his flipper. Okay. So you're gonna run it all the way down to the front, to the body. And you're gonna take your cord, and you're gonna skip these three beads, and you're going to go right into that one like that and kind of shift them around to make sure you have one and then one on either side that are like right on top of each other and then the one in the middle or the uh, the, the shoulder I'm pointing to my shoulder like you can see sorry guys um, so again we're gonna do it everything is the same on either side you call that And same thing as the other side. We're going to run it through that last bead, that fourth bead, and hope it doesn't get tangled up because that is a problem. There we go. So, and just like we did with the other leg, we want to make sure that we have one out here and then two on top of each other, and that'll make it look nice and pretty. So now he has his blue feet and flippers. I guess they're called flippers when they're sea turtles because they use them to swim. Semantics. All right, so there was that guy. Why do you look so goofy? Come on. Sometimes you gotta talk to him, you know. So then we're gonna go through the shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a row of seven, and we're gonna go back to our green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like to just hold them in my hand and thread them on because the cord is plastic so it's relatively stiff and you can kind of use it like a needle to these beads which is really fun. There we go. Less chance of throwing them on the floor accidentally. You can also, uh, if you don't have tape or if you don't have a tabletop to work on, um, you can also use like a door handle or your bedpost or something like that to tie the string around to anchor your um, keychain. So like tie a string around like your bedpost or your doorknob and then you work. Uh, I do like working on a tabletop simply because um, I have a way to make it flat and make sure it's flat, but you can always just use your hand to do that as well as you go. Because nice thing, it's, it's nothing like, you know, getting it off the, the, the wall and, and finding out that it's not sitting flat because then it didn't look as nice. So there's our seven, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So going, making the curve of his shell, and I think we're going to start to make a bit of a pattern. So I have some dark green beads in here, and I think I can give him a stripe down the middle. Let's see if I have enough. Like I said, everyone's kit's going to have a slightly different uh, distribution of bead colors. It's just what we were using at the time as we were going. So there are, how many rows in the, how many rows do we have? One, two, three rows. You know what I think I'm gonna do is go back one. So, and if you make a, if you finally make a mistake or you change your mind, like I just did, you can just pull out one row at a time. And if you really, really, really get frustrated and wanna start from the very beginning, you can always just, you know, pull all of it off and start again. That's the cool thing about these, is you can just go over and over again. All right, so I'm gonna to try to make his shell a different color, like a pattern, because I like patterns. If you watch the rest of mine, if you look at my other one, you see I, I did like the inside of his shell was a different color than the outside of him, just because I thought that looked cool. But uh, we're gonna do a stripe this time because I don't think I have enough dark green to actually fill in the outside of his shell. 
because I need a lot more than I have. At least for this one. Yeah, I'm not gonna have enough. Okay. So we'll start with the stripe and we're gonna start with this row of seven. Um, and I think we're doing two on either side and then three of the green. Let's see, two on either side. And the next row is gonna be nine. So we need to do three of the dark green, or light green on either side. And what I'm doing is I'm actually, uh, especially if you're if you're like me and wanna do a pattern, you want to look, make sure you have enough beads for it. I lay out the rows ahead of time. So I count down, that's the next row. Next one's gonna be three green beads in the middle. So I'm basically just giving you a stripe down his back. And sometimes you'll see in the wild, turtles will have uh, a ridge down their back um, of a different color or texture. And usually that's for camouflage or for protection, depending on the animal. Turtles are also cold-blooded, so you don't usually find them in the Arctic, um, but they can damp down on every continent besides the Arctic and the Antarctic. So. Uh, we got another row of nine, that's that one, and then we have another row of seven, so that'll be these three. And then two on the side. So you can kind of see how the pattern's gonna look when I get it done. There's that. So you see, you can kind of see how it's gonna look. Over here. So you have a seven, a nine, a nine, and a seven. That's kind of how it's gonna look, but it's gonna be on the side because our beads are running this way and not flat. All right, let's get this party started. Just say party like it's a fun thing, because it is. All right, so we got two, and when you're threading on with a pattern, just be aware you can't just randomly pull them. You have to kind of put them in order or else the pattern won't happen if that is what you want to do. Again, the pattern is totally your call, up to you. You can do like I said, the wackiest ones you want. You can make them all white if you want. And there, you know, probably are albino turtles out there that are all white. Um, in the wild, they tend not to survive as long because they don't have as much camouflage. They are green for a reason, or bluish green or whatever color, you, you know, they, they are for particular breeds and species. When a female turtle lays her eggs, she will lay a thousand, uh, thousands of time at the same place where she hatched every single time and out of those thousands of eggs only one in every 1,000 will survive to adulthood because they're teeny tiny and the ocean is full of bigger fish but the good thing is they do lay lots and lots of time so for each time she lays eggs if she gets you know one hatchling the species will survive. If she does it every single year, the species will grow. So, I know I said about female sea turtles. They uh, they live, they go back to their beach every year to lay their eggs. But what about the male sea turtles? What do they do? Well, male sea turtles actually never leave the ocean. Once they hatch and they swim out into the ocean, they will never land like on purpose. Sometimes you'll have beach sea turtles um, accidentally, but they usually try to get back to the ocean as quick as possible. Male sea turtles never actually go back to the beach. They just swim their whole lives. Could you imagine having to swim your whole life? And, so, and they live such a long time too. Some sea turtles can live up to a hundred years. So you'd be swimming for a hundred years. It's a long time, huh? Sometimes when you're doing your cord, uh, it'll get twisted, like mine just did. Um, I just kind of grab it from the inside and twist it until it straightens out. And it wants to be difficult right now. Come on. You just straighten it and then twist the other end so you kind of gently co convince it to uh, 
to sit flat. I, you don't have to have it straight. It, it doesn't have to be. The, the twisting will not really bother anything in the pattern, but um, I think it looks nicer. <laughs> That's me anyway. I think it looks nice. Okay, so there are another nine row, the last nine row. Then once we get that seven row, the next row is going to be the feet. One of the feet again. This is the last animal on this particular video for the awesome ocean life. If you want to look for, if you want to make the shark, if you want to make the jellyfish, or no, sorry, I keep telling you a jellyfish, it's an octopus. I mean, you can make it a jellyfish, I guess, but it's supposed to be an octopus. Um, you can go back to the timestamp on the description down below, um, I guess down this end, I don't know which direction this is facing. Um, you can go in and click on the timestamp and find that particular portion of the video so you don't have to sit there and, and search through it and um, you can make the other ones. I also include some fun facts about sharks and about octopus that you may not know. If you, and just like I said with all the other ones, if you can think of any facts about sea turtles that I might have missed or not talked about, I would love you to leave a comment and tell me more about sea turtles, any kind of facts that you think we should all know because I love to learn things and I think it's really fun to share our knowledge with our friends. All right, come. Oh, you didn't want to go in there. We included black cord for everybody so it goes with all the different animals. I'm kind of digging the pink though. Oh, it's all types of twisted right now. Come on. There we go. There we go. And I'm trying to make sure I line up these green lines, the uh, stripe here. But it doesn't want to work quite as well as I'd like. That's okay. Okay, foot. Feet time. So we need four blue beads, just like before, because the feet are exactly the same as the hands. And we will put four on one string, just like last time. And then we'll run all the way down, and we'll put it through the last bead, just like last time. Yep, only through the one. Just trying to go through the other green bead. No! No, just, and then we make sure they are lined up right, just like last time. Wait, where are we going here? All right, there we go. And just because I'm a little bit silly about lining things up right, I. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, hang on. No idea what's going on with this guy. He wants to twist. Sometimes this happens. It's just a matter of, matter of fiddling with it. And sometimes starting over and making sure that your cord is not severely twisted already. There we go. All right, let's try that. Hey, that worked better. Yep, sometimes the easiest thing to do is just restart. <laughs> because otherwise you just get yourself all worked up. Okay, that's his foot. And again, that's gonna be a little loose until we get the next row in, so don't worry about that. And then, of course, we'll repeat on the other side because everything is symmetrical, which is the word I was looking for earlier, symmetrical. You ever sit there and you know a word, you know a word, and you just cannot, cannot for the life of you think of what it is. That is my life. Now he's got feet and hands, or flippers, front and rear flippers, as you would. Oh, okay, so now we're working on his behind. We go down to five, and we're going to try to maintain that pattern, I think, because I think it's a really cool stripe we can do all the way to his booty. 
So because it's five, we are still maintaining that three-part stripe, but we'll do one on either side of light green. Where'd you go? Where are you going? Here's that. Take that. And it's perfectly fine to talk to your projects. Because um, even though they're just pretend, sometimes it makes you feel better. It's not cooperating. Give it a little talking to. So now we can pull the feet a little bit more snug so they have a better shape to them. Otherwise they get a little wobbly. All right, so there's that. And you see you've got a shell and you see it's got a little rounded shape. So we have one more row and that is a two. And I think I'm just gonna use two more dark green to make that stripe his tail. I think that'd be good and fun. Again, it is up to you and whatever you want to do. All right, so when you are at the end of your animal, you wanna make sure it's, you know, fairly snug. All you're gonna to do to finish it, and you see how you got a little extra, like I said, there's usually extra. You're going to tie a simple overhand knot. So just, you know, you take one, cross it over, and you flip it under it and through the hole, and that's an overhand knot. And you wanna make sure his, his tail's crooked. Get your tail back where it belongs. Excuse me. There we go. All right, so tail, tie it one time. And then you're gonna do another one. And if you do it right, you'll have yourself a square knot, um, which is very sturdy. And then if you want it to be extra snug and extra secure, um, you or an adult or a grown up can put a dab of sticky glue or even hot glue if you have it. Um, obviously a grown up's gonna help you with that uh, on that little knot. And that'll kind of keep it so it doesn't move. Uh, GIMP does tend to loosen up over time. So it's not a bad idea. I usually leave um, about an inch, inch and a half of tail on the gimp so that it has something to hang on to. Cut it too short and there's always that risk that it's gonna fall apart. And that'd be terrible because then you have beads everywhere. <laughs> That's trip hazard, tripping hazard. All right, let's release him from his prison. And we have finished Shell the Turtle. And he is absolutely adorable and I hope he hangs on a keychain or a backpack or something like that for a long time. And if you do want to explore other animals, again, the, the materials that I used, I purchased from local craft stores and the local big box stores. So they're not super expensive. You can usually get about a pack of 500 for uh, $2, maybe three, um, which is plenty. Um, if you want to get different colors, it's always nice to have that variety. Um, you can do that too. And you're welcome to, you can always go onto Pinterest and look for beaded animal keychains and it'll have no shortage I was inundated by uh, different uh, uh, patterns and crafts that you can do with these things. So I even found a BB-8 one from Star Wars and I was like, how can I throw that into this craft? And I couldn't figure out how, but they exist. So check it out if you'd like. Um, and that is all for our shell. And then we're gonna go do a quick uh, goodbye and we'll be done. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our Beaded Animal Pals Awesome Ocean Life. Um, whether you decided to do the shark, the octopus, or the sea turtle. Either way, we hope you had a great time, and I hope you uh, had a, a, a lovely experience with it. I hope you've learned something about the animals this time around as well. And I hope you join us for other programs later on in the uh, summer reading series. We also we have lots of fun things coming for you uh, between story times, uh, other craft projects. We have lots of things for teens and kids as well. Don't forget to sign up for the Summer Reading Program Bean Stack, where you can fill out uh, and tick off a game board, a virtual game board, uh, with various activities that will keep you very occupied all summer long. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.